Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of One Cool Thing. It is uh, the beginning of December, and we currently have for you uh, on Facebook's daily show where we talk to you about one cool thing we've been testing here in PC Labs, a what is probably the most expensive piece of technology that we have ever had on this show, at least in 2017. I'm Tom Brandt. This is Jim Fisher. Uh, please the ask us your questions once we tell technology. you what this extraordinarily expensive thing is. Uh, or if you're watching later on YouTube, you can always subscribe to our channel and then you'll get notified when we have another video. All right, without further ado, what, what do we have here? This is the Phase 1 IQ3 100 MP Achromatic. Oh yes, so it's a, it's a mouth IQ. It's it, it right. is it is it is the is one of the newer backs in the Phase One system, digital medium format system. This is a removable digital back that works with this body and lens. Uh, it is a 101 megapixel black and white only in image sensor, medium format. Uh, so it's a 645 style, a format film frame. Okay, so those are so you you mentioned black and white. So this is a black and white camera. And then the other thing that everyone wants to know is how much does it cost? Uh, the 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 as you're holding it there is $54,990, so a little under $55,000. And if you already have a phase one system and you just want to get the back by itself to add it to your system, $49,990. Okay, so, so the question is then, $55,000 for a black and white camera. What is so special about this camera? Well, it's got a really, really big okay, sensor so and amazing image quality. Uh, and that's, that's what you're paying for is, okay. is the size of the image sensor. It's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 there are less expensive medium format options there with a 44 by 33 millimeter image sensor. This has got a 55 by 44 sensor, so it's bigger all around. Very close in size to 645 format, medium format film. So we should talk about some of the types of things that people are going to be using this for. Um, obviously, it's very specialized. Uh, but uh, what are some more of the, um, the specs and things that, that people can expect uh, from phase one. I mean, they're, they're, they've been around for a while. They've made professional cameras yeah. for a while. So uh, what I mean, medium format systems, uh, especially on this level, tend to gravitate towards very, very high-end fine art photographers as well as uh, with, the, with this back, uh, landscape photographers, because it's going to have the black and white uh, rendering and it has an infrared sensitivity as well. Mm -hmm. So right now we have an IR cut filter on here which cuts out incoming light. Okay. But if you take that off, this becomes a wide spectrum camera that records both infrared and visible light. And if you put on a filter to block visible light, you can shoot infrared only. And we have some kind of examples of that in the review at PCMag.com of, of di various different ways, the, 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 the differences between infrared yeah. and, and yeah. You know, visible I, light. I had a 092 infrared filter to use with the, with the lens. And when you use that type of filter, uh, you especially with foliage, you'll notice, and it's winter, so I had to ha had to look around for some grass and things that were not dead. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, didn't get a lot of leaves, unfortunately. But you get uh, you get very the foliage, which is normally appears dark green. You know, on color photos or darker in a normal black and white photo, is going to appear bright white. So is that an advantage over, say, taking the image with a really high quality, uh, tons of megapixels color camera, and then converting it to black and white? Right. What's the why shoot in black and white first? The advantage is when you have a high resolution color camera, mm -hmm. you're only sampling data at every third pixel because you have the RGB filter over the sensor to make the colors. Okay. So there's interpolation going on inside the camera, inside the raw file saying, well, you know, this we this has got red by it here and here, so we think this is red too, but it's not 100% sure. With black and white, you are you are getting the luminance data at every pixel site, so effectively, uh, you're getting more resolution, that, and it's especially true when you're shooting things with a lot of texture. Yeah. You'll see, you'll see bumps and things in in in, and uh, or shooting textured paper. You'll see the, the printing printing information more clearly on this than you would uh, on a color back when magnified. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about this fifty-five thousand dollar Phase One professional black and white camera. Um, now that that brings and, and please ask us your questions uh, if you're watching live on Facebook. Five thousand uh, dollar phase one question. professional. So uh, with a hundred megapixels, you can essentially you're, you're you're pretty much unlimited in terms of the detail that you can show for, from an image, right? Yeah, I mean, if you want to scroll down here on the on the big yeah, screen, we can see the big screen. I don't know if we can see the big screen. Uh, on the, we uh, can as long as we get rid of this here. Just wanted to show one of these as an example uh, to the picture image of the dog. The first okay, image of the so dog. Okay, so let's keep going. All right, so that that was a you know dogs are somewhat cooperative when you're photographing them. 
that's Duke. Oh, let's uh, close when, this window here. <laughs> when, I was, when I was shooting this image, uh, you know, I didn't get the angle on it exactly right, so I ended up rotating the canvas quite a bit. And the final frame uh, was 65 megapixels after I cropped it. Mm -hmm. And when I looped in on his eye that's in focus there in the front in Capture One just to see the pixel level detail, it's just, it was an amazing, I could see little reflections in, the, in his eye. Mm -hmm. And it's something that you know, you're not going to get even with high resolution 35 millimeter format systems. It's just you get that extra extra resolution. Yeah, that is that really is, is amazing. And this isn't even zoomed. This no, is this is just much. this is web resolution. This is you know <laughs> yeah. 740 pixels wide for yeah. for our template. Let's uh, take a question. Is there a real market for this? Sure. Uh, you know, it's a very small market, but it's there. I mean, be, their phase one has been around for a long time, and they're continuing to make cameras. Yeah, I think that you know ultimately this comes down to something that you are. You know, I mean, if, if there you are in the industry and you have a certain type of, uh, you know, style of photos that you're known for, um, this is just one more tool that can get you there. And despite the astronomical cost, it could make sense for you if yeah. you're, say, and you also, know, have lots of clients. Also, keep in mind, if, if you need it for a specific job, you can get it from Rental House. You don't have to buy it. It's, you know, yeah. this is the level of equipment where I, I have a shoot. I need this type of camera, this type of detail. I can get it for a weekend. Now, uh, one thing that, you know, I'm not a photographer. I, I don't, uh, I, I certainly, you know, limit myself to taking photos with my iPhone 6S. But one of the things that I've heard is that the best, the, really the best camera is the camera that you have with you. Uh, so, you know, you're not bringing this camera around with you. This is really for studio work or you know, uh, I, specific tasks. You know, I could, I could see using this a lot of landscape photographers who are very dedicated to their craft, the type who, get to you know the site two hours before sunrise to make everything set up right and, and yeah. wait for the perfect light, they're gonna use something like this or mm -hmm. a color version of it. Or you know, one of the equivalents, one of the competitive competing models from say House of Blood or Fujifilm or Pentax that are also uh, in the digital format, uh, digital medium format market. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about some of the like most amazing specs about this thing. Let's talk about some of the more detailed ones, but before we do that, let's uh, take a question. Can it do a video? No. No video. No you, video. You, uh, yeah, this this doesn't have the, the sensor is really just 100 it's, megapixel still. Sensor. It's right. It's the sen the sensor readout mm. speed is the issue there. It mm. does have an electronic shutter option which you can use to eliminate vibration completely. The the, the lens here is a leaf oh. shutter lens, so that's pretty low vibration already if you're shooting in mirror up mode with live view for focus. Uh, but if you really want to just get a shot with no vibration at all, you can set to electronic shutter, uh, and you can have there's a seismograph in the camera that will hold the Fine, shot. So that's not no pretty low vibration at all. Uh, but one of the downsides of electronic shutter goes back to sensor readout, which is a video, which is what we're talking about for video, is that if you've got moving subjects in it, you really don't want to use the electronic shutter, uh, mm -hmm. which is the same reason for video, because the sensor has to read out line by line by line by line, and there's so much data and it can only read out so fast, the video is just not happening. So now let's go around the camera and look at some of the other uh, features we've got here. I see uh, what appears to be a silver metallic screw thing. What is yep, that? That's the PC sync socket. That's for hooking up to a studio strobe. And that's actually a feature of the viewfinder because this viewfinder is removable if I remember how to get it off. <laughs> anyway, believe me, <laughs> this viewfinder gonna... <laughs> comes off with this switch. I think I might have to take the back off first to okay. do it. Uh, but you can replace this with a waist level finder if you like the old old style looking down and focusing uh, on the frame there. Uh, viewfinder comes off with yeah, this switch. I think I might have to take the back off or build into the viewfinder. The camera itself has a wireless commander for pro photo strobes. Um, and then in terms of battery, it's got a removable battery? It's got two batteries. two batteries. It's got okay. one, in the, uh, one in the body, one in the back. They are the same battery. So it does power sharing. You can run off one or both. And uh, what and about Wi-Fi, uh, there, things like that? There's Wi-Fi and there's an iPad app uh, to you know remotely control the camera via, via your iPad and also preview what you're shooting. Mm -hmm. In the studio, more often you use wired tethering. You have FireWire 800 and USB 3.0 full size. Uh, I think the A port full size is that, mm -hmm. the, or full size B, whatever the whatever the big USB 3.0 port is. They you know can hook up to your computer and the Capture One software, which is Phase One's tethering and raw conversion software, in order to control it via your computer and view the images as you shoot them right on the screen at full resolution, so you can have. An idea of like if you're focusing in raw conversion software, you need it to be in yeah, order to control right. your and and so but FireWire 800 that brings up an interesting point. Is that still kind of is that still used in professional studios? I I think if you have a legacy iMac that doesn't have USB 3, uh -huh. sure. 
but I think more people are moving over the USB for, for, for okay. tethering. Okay, like everywhere else in, in yeah. consumer tech. So why not include a USB-C? Well, this back, this back has been, uh, the IQ3 back has been out for a couple years now. We looked at the color version of this about a year and a half ago. So fit and finish of the back, other than the sensor itself, is the same. I imagine with the next iteration of the back, and they, again, this is a modular upgradable back, mm -hmm. we'll see more modern ports. Yeah, and that's something that you know, we've been seeing the back, more and more is, is, is Thunderbolt 3 connections. But uh, you know, photography equipment is, is expensive, and computers yeah. are even more so, so it's, yeah, it's I, a I've, slow process. I've not seen any cameras with Thunderbolt, but we have seen some with USB-C coming out. Uh, let's take another question. Oh, we're good on questions. Okay. Yeah. So um, just to recap here, this is the, why don't you tell me the model number so it's we make the, sure that we get the, it right. Well, the back is the IQ3 uh, 100 megapixel achromatic, and okay. it's the XF system. This is mm -hmm. the more modern. So we it's make sure the, that we get the, it right. Well, uh, the, the back one, is the IQ3 uh, really really 100 megapixel. And then the, the lens that we have set up, what is that? This is the 80 millimeter lens. This is your standard angle starter lens. When you buy the phase one system, you have the option of getting, when you buy everything together, whatever lens that they make that you want. Mm -hmm. So that's a big plus too, because this is this is one of the least lesser expensive lenses. You can get a more expensive lens bundled with it and not increase the price. And, and now we mentioned uh, infrared light earlier. We should probably show the, the difference between oh, yeah, the infrared. Oh yeah, scroll down, down uh, on the, on the so Let's go back to our review here, just to show you kind of the difference. It's down toward, uh, yeah. Uh, close this window here, go back to edge and we'll scroll down to the kind of difference here between infrared and the visible spectrum. So you can kind of see, yeah. yeah. And you see here, this is a, this is your visible spectrum like you would, what you would normally get. When you see the wide spectrum, which is both infrared and visible light, you can see kind of the white popping in the foliage a little bit, but you get the dark green as well. But then here in the, in the final shot, the infrared only shot, the what foliage you would is very, get. very white. I've got another one with more plant life involved. Uh, that really shows you what the white. Oh plant. yes, I mean, it's a very, very dark green plant reality. Very yeah. dark, and that actually looks like literally, you know, almost fake. Uh, not fake, right. but but incredible. And detail. I shot it there with a the stone because I wanted to kind of get a contrast of, of living and non-living. And yeah. even with the lichens growing on the stone and things, you can see, you know, it's the lichens are also showing up white, which is very interesting. Right. So uh, definitely check out the uh, full review of this camera on PCMag.com, along with many other uh, some same sample images, kind of amazing detail you're going to get from this. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, are the lenses for this medium uh, medium format specific and what's the price range of the lenses for it? Uh, yes, they are. They're specific to the system. They are, uh, they use the same amount as the old Mamiya camera system and uh, up until recently the Phase 1 was selling cameras under both brands but now it's just Phase 1 I believe. Uh, they start at a couple thousand dollars and they range up from that. Um, and obviously no color. Uh, they're all black and white, right? Well, I mean, it's just phase one, I believe. It depends on uh, the They started, no, okay. the, you know, if you put the, the they have the uh, normal XF3 100 megapixel back we looked at last year, uh, is, you know, is I think that's a, a few thousand dollars less than this mm -hmm. kit, and they have a new back called a trichromatic, which is a stronger Bayer filter for better color reproduction uh, that is around the same price as this. So the question is, you, if you if you're considering this, you probably know that you want it. You know that you need a tool like this. Yeah. What 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 is your general recommendation for people who need really good quality but probably want to shoot sometimes? If in you're color, considering this, you probably uh, know that you don't need to spend quite that much money. All right, we do have budget, medium <laughs> format recommendations. Right okay. now, it's the Fujifilm GFX 50s, which is around nine thousand uh, dollars. It's a mirrorless camera. It has a smaller image sensor. It's a 33 by 44, 50 megapixel. But if you want to dip your toes in the medium format. You know that's a really good way to go. If you want to stick, if you're fine with full frame 35 millimeter format, uh, the Sony A7R3, the Nikon D850, those are our top. But if you want to dip your toes in the medium and, format, and then you can check you know, all of those yeah. reviews out. Right, and there's also if you want to shoot 35 millimeter black and white only, and I would never in a million years say Leica is a budget option, but the Leica M Monochrome is eight thousand dollars, which compared with this is, is much is less budget. money. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the, the the this is the type of thing where where when you're in the industry, you kind of aren't phased. By, by right. you know these things that cost you know as much as a, a car or you know like a fixture for your house it's 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 <laughs> the the costs are, are incredible <laughs> well thanks phased very much Jim uh, so by, again by this is, right. you know these uh, things the phase one fifty four thousand dollar camera check out the full review at pcmag.com and uh, we will uh, be back tomorrow at ten a.m. Eastern time with yet another one cool thing which I can almost guarantee you will not be as expensive as this amazing camera here. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.